I've shown you my home, not to show off. Hmm. I've shown you my home so that people know that it is possible to achieve it as a woman. Wow. It is possible to achieve it as a woman. If you work very hard, you know what you want in life. Is this Bentley? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is a Bentley. My late husband loved cars. Oh. He was my inspiration. He loved cars. Yeah, I he had can a Lamborghini, he had a Ferrari, a Royce. He just loved cars. So because of that, I also took that from him. I also love cars. Hmm. I love cars. This is the only car you have? I've got a G-Wagon, but it's, uh, it's not here at the moment. It's in South Africa. It's gone for service. So these are material things, like the Bible says. We are going to leave all this behind when we go. But whilst we are on earth, and God allows it to happen. That's also something, if you are given something, you can't look after it, because you have been given. You don't know how to look after it. You don't know how difficult it was for the person that gave you to get the money to buy what they will have given you. That's why you find if, if I give you 10,000 today, because you didn't work for it, Chances you won't do much with it. Thank you. But if you give 10,000 to someone who is an entrepreneur, if you come back after two months, that 10,000 could be 15,000 or 20,000. But other people, you give them 10,000, especially girls. I always say girls of today. You give her 10,000, the first thing she thinks of, she's going to Louis Vuitton, she's going to Gucci. She's, that's, what, that's all they think of. Um, to buy the, the latest hair. That's what all they think of. They will never say, okay, I've been given 10,000. Let me think, what can I invest in to make sure this 10,000 remains there? Others will go to China, buy clothes, resell, make that money multiply. My name is Odom Kandla, CEO of Travis Travel in Arare, born and bred in Blawayo. Zimbabwe has got beautiful women, but the most beautiful come from Blawayo. That is a fact. I'm a mother of two girls, Precious and Melissa Mtunzi, 27 and 21 year old. I'm 50 years of age. Many of you might not believe, but I am 50 years of age. No, you're what? I love my country. I love Zimbabwe. I'm proudly Zimbabwean. There's nothing I wouldn't do for my country. Anytime you see me in this outfit, it means that this is my last day in a particular country. Hello, 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 hello. It's Zozo, eh? Yes, Zozo is my wow, name. They call a, me Zozo. How are you? A, I'm good. It's a pleasure Welcome. meeting you. Welcome to my country. Thank you. You're everywhere. And everyone knows you. Let me tell you something. I went to a place and then they didn't want me to go. I'm like, oh, my, my friend is Zodua. It's like, oh, just pass, pass, pass. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? Your name I'm saved me. Yeah, my name, Dora, I'm, I've got an effect on everybody. All I have is my name. That's all I have. That's all you I've have? I've got nothing. Nothing, riches, everything is nothing. What I have is my name. My name is more important to me. There's no price anyone can pay for my name. So when I go out there, when people talk about Zodra or when they associate themselves with me, they have to identify with the name, with the brand. Because, I will forever yeah. associate myself with you <laughs> since I'm in Zimbabwe. <laughs> I hope when I mention when I your name, you. people will give me money. Listen, I, I, I want to tell you more stories. So I told my friend that I'm going to meet Zodra. He's like, no way. I think you've made it to life, man. Because I think people cannot have access to you like that. I well, don't know. No, they, they have access. It's just that it's an assumption. I, People think I'm not accessible. You wow. called me. When you called me, mm -hmm. it, was, it took you less than 30 minutes from the time I got a message from our common friend in Ghana. Thank you. And you got to my house. Within 30 minutes, Within you were 30 here. Minutes. So if I was not accessible, it would not have been possible for you to see me. I don't, I don't have a secretary. I'm my own PA. I manage my own diary. I manage my own life. I don't... No, you don't have a yeah. PA. I think you, don't need, have a PA. you need me as a PA. I, I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> I can be as a long, As long as you are selling my country, my tourism. I'm so happy for you welcoming to your house. Oh, 
it's not a house, I'm sorry. What come into your mansion? It's, it's a mansion, right? It's a house. It's a house. Yeah. Stop being humble, <laughs> it's okay? It's, a, it's a one of many or it's just this one? Since I'm here, I really need to know more about you, what you do, how it all started. So I, I need a place to sit. Just, I don't drink beer, I need water. So that I can ask you all the questions. Is that okay? You need to drink beer. Beer? To, to be able to ask the Maybe questions. Maybe if I need beer, then I need Zambezi beer. No, but it should be alcohol-free beer. Alcohol-free There's Zambezi. no alcohol-free. There is alcohol-free beer. You said you were born in Bulawayo? Yes. Grew up in Bulawayo? Yes. You schooled in Bulawayo? I went to school in Bulawayo, yes. Did a few years in Harare, but most of my education was in Blawayo. And what brought you to Harare? My father used to work for Foreign Affairs in Harare, so that's why we lived here. But when he then was sent on a diplomatic mission outside Zimbabwe, then that's why I then moved back to Blawayo. Oh, okay. Because we were originally from there, so it made sense for the children to remain home than to remain in Harare. You didn't but, go? Uh, you... No, I didn't, I didn't travel with him. I would only go to visit on during school holidays and then uh, come back for when schools open. How was life in Zimbabwe growing up? It's always been beautiful, it's always been the same. Zimbabwe is all I know. It's a beautiful country. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't move to go and stay anyway. I think for me this is home. I don't think I would be comfortable staying in any other country. Yes, I love visiting. Mm. I can only do a week at most. 10 days in a foreign country, but I love my Zimbabwe. I think, I think this is me. This is, I've been born in, I'm 50 years of age. That's all I've known. No, you're what? I'm 50 years. I yeah. turned 50 this year. You, so, don't, you don't look 50. Well, my jeans, Palawayo jeans. <laughs> so I, I, I've been, look at my age of 50, where would I go? All I've known is Zimbabwe. Doesn't mean that well, you never lived any country apart from Zimbabwe. I've never lived in any country. I've only gone on holiday to visit and come back. That's mm. all I've ever done. I've never like gone to, yes, my parents were diplomats. They stayed in Angola, they stayed in Ethiopia, they stayed in India, but I just only went to those countries just to visit mm. and to come back. So I've always been, the, Zimbabwe is all I know. I know how to maneuver, I know how to do business here, the people understand each other, we know how our systems work. So I wouldn't want to go in a land where I'm going to be told what to do, because I don't think we are brought up with those people that are taught how to do. We are the ones who tell people what we need done to be independent people in Zimbabwe. So you find many of us are very independent. Many of us want to work for themselves. We are all hard workers. That is what makes us the nation that we are today. So which means you have made in Zimbabwe for that? Yes. I want to know how it all started. Okay. Give me a brief of how you became the Zodowa that saved me from so many things. I used to go to, to school. I would walk 10 to 15 kilometers to school uh, from my f first year of school up to grade seven in the village. That's where my father came from. So I stayed with his mom. That's where I was staying in the, that's why I stayed in the village. So when my, the grandmother passed away, then I moved to Harare to come and join the parents. Okay. And then um, education year yeah, up to form three, then moved back to Blawayo, did my education, finished, then came back to Harare, <laughs> did my diplomas, travel and tourism, then got my first job at a company called Express Motors as a bus conductor. So I was selling bus tickets at that company, um, I think for two years, then I left and then I got a job at a travel agent as a receptionist. That was 1995. I worked at that travel agency as a receptionist and then started doing ticketing consultants, I think for three years, then I moved. I didn't look, I think I have always been wanting or looking for something better to do because I never was happy staying in one place because I always thought that, you know what, I think if I move to this company, I'll be better. That's what I did until I said, no, wait a minute. I keep moving from one job to the other. Mm -hmm. I, end up in a, I ended up in a, a job trotter. One, I'm here one year, I move, I'm here. What are you looking for? Then I said to myself, you know what, I think let me start my own business. Prior to that, I was teaching. 
after work. I've always been an entrepreneur all my life. Wow. I would go after work, I would go to college to learn how to make cakes, to learn how to cook, to learn how to cut clothes and all that. Mm. And then during weekends, I would be doing wedding cakes, I would be doing events, whatever, and I would be teaching. I ended up wow. having my own classroom at home where I was teaching at home uh, the travel and tourism from the house. So I've always wanted to make my own money without working for somebody. So that's the journey. 1999, we decided to start a company called Real Travel and Tours with my four partners. One of which I'd met as my student at uh, where I was teaching. Then he says, no, you can't be a teacher and then working for somebody. Can you start our own travel agency? We started our own travel agency in 1999 with this gentleman that I, who was my student. He had money. He had his own businesses. He had started way before me. We started the company in 1999. 2000, I was the marketing director, there was a CEO and other people. Still, I wasn't satisfied. Because I felt that I was doing all the marketing for the business, so I was bringing all the clients. I felt that all the money belonged to me. I didn't mm. want to share with the other three directors. <laughs> so I moved again. Yes, I moved 2003. I started my own entity, which is Travis Travel. That is where I am now. So wow. since 2003, I've been running my own business. It's never, it hasn't been easy. Just like anything, it's never easy. It's like a baby is born. It's not easy there for the child to grow up. They, they are born, they start crawling, they start to walk, they start talking. So many things happen. Same applies with a business. Mm. When, you, a business is, when you open a business, it's like a baby being born. Yeah. You have to look after it like an egg so that it doesn't break. Mm. Though sometimes it can fall, break what is important is when you're falling what do you do do i fall and remain sleeping forever or i fall i pick myself up i start afresh i find out what is it that i did wrong so that you correct yourself so i started my business 2003 it wasn't easy like i thought it was going to be but because i'm not a quitter i don't give up i always nothing with me something that cannot talk back to me can never be difficult From 2003 to now, yeah. what has been the major challenge that you faced? The major challenge, like any other economy, you know, the economy keeps going up and down. The, our currencies, the fluctuations, the rate changes and all that. I think that's what's been a challenge for most of the businesses that we have in Zimbabwe. But um, the spirit is the same. The Zimbabwean people, they are very supportive. Mm -hmm. And when they believe in a product, they believe in it and they will do it. Like we've been... Uh, a top agency, a top producer for so many years and uh, people they know us, they love us and look, challenges are there mm. like any other business. Mm. What is important is when you have those challenges, what is it that you do? What do you then do? Do I close shop? Do I move to another country? What do I do? But for me, giving up is not an option. So we've never given up as much as we'll have challenges, but we always try and find a way we engage our stakeholders. Mm. Yeah. What is it that we can do differently? What is it that um, we must change to make sure that we get the business that we want? What is it that we must do to make sure that our clients, our customers are happy with the service that we produce, provide mm. to them mm. as, as a company? So there's always ways where we don't sleep. We are always finding ways of how do we give a better service? To the next person how can we be different from the other company my belief there's only two travel agents in zimbabwe travel travel and others that's my belief <laughs> i've always believed in that so when someone wants to travel they must think travel fine they can't come to travel they'll go to others but their first point of uh, point of call should be travel travel what's the main service that you provide your company we do provides? air tickets air tickets all over the world, locally, internationally, regionally. We do hotel accommodation, we do airport transfers, car hire, holiday packages, cruises, everything. Anything you do travel, we do. So have you heard about Rich Cousins? No, first time. Rich Cousins, it's, a, it's us, it's our, we've got a group of ours as girls, as friends. Okay. There's 14 of us. On my 50th birthday, okay. they put money together, 50,000 US dollars. That's what bought this kitchen. I need those friends in my life. You, they, are, they are very good. You know, they are my sub, they are my pillar of strength. They support team. 
we are there for each other. Whenever wow. one is down, we, we never let one be alone. Is this flight so, in or something? I'm from, I'm from the village, yeah? so this one looks so long. Oh my goodness. Ah, there's no food in the kitchen right now. We haven't, we still, <laughs> it's just been, <laughs> the kitchen is only Ooh. two days old. Oh, really? Yeah, it was only installed some two days ago, so we haven't. Oh, um, this is amazing, man, like really beautiful and a touch of luxury. My daughters. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are they married, though? So? No, they're not married and they're not looking. Wait. Oh. Wait. They're not married and they're not looking. They are in relationships, so they say claim. Apple two, mother of two. Mother of two? Yes. Precious and Melissa. 27 and 21. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Divorced with their father. And where's the dad now? He lives in England. Oh. He's, he missed out on, he left when she was three months old. You know, he has never come back to Zimbabwe since he left, so I think he may be remarried. So you took care of the daughters by yourself? I took, I took care of them by myself. And then uh, Genius, they were six and twelve when I met Genius. So he then took over from them. With Genius? My late, hus my, my late ex-husband. So Jinimbi. Jinimbi. Oh. Oh my God, how come I didn't know this? The guy who you passed did, on. Yes, you didn't do your homework well. No, I'm sir. so... It, that's your late husband? Yeah. Before he passed on, were you guys still friends? Very close friends. He's one person I spoke to every day of my life. We have very, very close friends. I spoke to him even two, three hours before he passed on. Were you guys together before he passed on? We're not together. We, we, I think we had uh, broken up for a year before he passed on. But we're now working on getting back again. You know, uh, my relationship with Janimbi, look, those that know us, they'll say those two, they never go apart. We would break up and make up, break up and make up. But he was a wonderful guy. He was a, he was, he was, he was, he was a good guy. And um, how has the debt affected you? We still haven't recovered. We still, it's going to take years for me to like forget about him or I don't think we, we, it's, we, it's something that you can forget. He was, he played a very big role in my life, wow. in my family, in my girls. My younger one was, they were so close, they were, look, he, he was the father she never had. Oh, wow! Indoor swimming pool. Yes, my brother, do you want to swim? <laughs> Can you swim? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm the best Olympic swimmer, but uh, my body doesn't touch water. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh my goodness. This is a bar, right? Yes, it's a bar. I hope we don't encourage people to drink um, Zambezi and then jump into the swimming Like pool. I said, we serve alcohol free. Everything here is alcohol. It doesn't have alcohol content, so they can drink as much as they want. Oh my goodness. I'm inspired. I think there are so many young women watching us right now who will be so much inspired of what you've been able to achieve because... Can, can I say you're a millionaire though? No. How? How am I a millionaire? No, no I mean... Just... I, listen, I'm just going to tell you something. <laughs> Your kitchen costs $50,000. <laughs> so you're going, to, you're going to calculate the, the check? The house costs $800,000. No. Oh. It's not possible. Remember, the house was built by my late husband, so I don't know how much it cost him to make to build oh, he it. He built it. Yeah, so I don't know how much he used to build it. So that one, it, uh, it's it's his cost, it's his expense, not mine. You have a million. I'm a half a millionaire. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you had come earlier, I would have started with the exercise together. But me, yeah, only food. I only exercise with food. You know, when you are eating, the hands goes up and down. That's like I'm working out. <laughs> This is amazing. And, and it's God's it work. You know what? Let, I've always said there's a time I run every morning. I do 10 kilometers every morning. So when I run outside, when I get out of my house at 5 in the morning, you run and when you come back, I would stand outside and ask, is it really me? Is this really my house? Has really God blessed me this much? It took me time to believe that I've been able to achieve this single-handedly. It really took me time. 
yes i had help here and there from uh, my late but um 90 percent it's hard work a woman working hard I do, do you have you seen that like so many people out there never believe that women can actually make it big and anytime a woman makes it big they it's associate it with a man that's what they do we, it's actually everywhere in the world they believe a woman cannot do it without a help of a man but mine is opposite yes a woman can make it with the help of the, there's nothing wrong with your men as helping you mm. achieve stuff mm. but there's also nothing wrong with you as a woman helping your men achieve stuff it's two-sided remember all equals We've been saying that there's no difference between a man and a woman because we are all equal. God has blessed us equally the same. Mm. So, but I admire women that want to stand up on their own and work for themselves as women. Don't depend on men a lot because the young girls of today, they think for them to live, for them to look good, a man must be there, a man must bless them, a man must do that. As a result, they end up, they don't go to school. Right now, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock, they're sleeping. Because they went to the club last night. They only got home at 6 in the morning. How do you expect to progress? They get pregnant. You don't even know how to look after your own child. You have to be going from one man to... And these men, they will abuse you. Because as long as you are always asking from them, all they do is just give you when they can. When they're fed up, they're fed up. They move on to the next girl. Remember, they've been born every day. There's beautiful, more beautiful and beautiful girls every day. Like I always tell them, I'm 50. They might be 19. When they are 50, they will not look half as good as I look. Yep. Because I exercise, I eat, I, I eat well, I eat healthy, and I work hard to make sure I maintain my lifestyle. But if you don't have the resources to look after yourself, it's not possible. If you don't work hard enough to have the resources to take care of yourself and your family, it's also not possible. Because you can't be asking a man every day, I need money to this, I need to do my hair, I need to do makeup, I need to... You can't. I don't want my girl child to be begging for any financial support from any man. I want them to be financially independent. All kids actually must be financially independent. So, that's what I think. I don't want, I've not raised, I'll talk about my kids at this stage. I've not raised my kids to be kids that beg for men. They must be independent. Well, and most of these men that want to bless these young girls have got their own wives at home and their own kids that must look after. So why are they looking after somebody else's child? Hmm. And why do we not see it as women that these men are using us as a dustbin? This your bedroom. This is my bedroom. This is where I spend quality time. If I come here on a Friday, I don't leave until Sunday when I go to church. I don't get out of the room. Only to go and eat if I'm hungry, but otherwise, I stay here. I really like your love for God. Above all, put God first before everything that you do and everything else to be added unto you. And uh, without God, I don't think anything is possible. I know some people don't believe there is a God, but there is a God out there. And with me and my family and my household, even at work, we pray every morning before we do anything. And it has taken us this far and we will continue to do that. Without God, we wouldn't be the people that we are today. And um, I owe everything to him because he's been very good to me. He's been very generous. He's been, even through, when I go through difficult times, mm. sometimes when I'm not able to pray, still things still happen. Um, he's, um. Never, he's never, he's never, he's never like really left me alone, you know? So it's good that even if you lose the loved ones, but God never leaves, he's always there. This is my walk-in closet. Walk-in closet? It looks like my entire house, bro. Uh, oh, I didn't say anything. I was just <laughs> telling them that the house looks so beautiful. Oh my goodness. The walk-in closet. Okay. It's a different uh, hairstyle, eh? Different hairstyles. The other <laughs> ones have gone to the step, they've gone to the saloon to be cleaned. They were empty ones. Do you actually know which shoe to use every day? 
No, I've got, um, I, I, look, I've got too many shoes. This, this is nothing. I've got too many shoes. I, I love shoes. Shoes are my, look. You know, when somebody tells you that you can't live good in Africa, show them this video. <laughs> <laughs> shoes shoes i think i buy more shoes than anything are there more shoes shoes mm. okay more shoes i love shoes what <laughs> hey, what's going on with you? No, no. <laughs> I have no words. I, I don't know. You guys can judge from the video. I don't know what to say. You mean this is the bathroom? Yes. Wow. <laughs> what? I, I I have no words now. I don't okay, know. Okay, so no words. Let's go. Let's go. Oh Since my you have God. no words. I have no words. His and hers. When I get married, I've got two showers. I'm keeping this one for him when he comes. Who? When I get married. You you still want to get married again? Yeah. Why not? Come Do you want on. me to, to die by myself? Nah, it's okay. In you need my to own age. Life. You know, like I've never done a video like this. This is definitely going to be the first one. I believe that a lot of people will be inspired so that they. Yeah, we, we allow me we to not, come to their homes. I really want to go to more people's homes now. No, I've shown you my home, not to show off. Hmm. I've shown you my home so that people know that it is possible to achieve it as a woman. Wow. It is possible to achieve it as a woman. If you work very hard, you know what you want in life. You can achieve this. These are material things, like the Bible says. We are going to leave all this behind when we go. But whilst you are on earth, and God allows it to happen, why not enjoy it? Why not enjoy it? Enjoy it whilst it lasts. Yes, while it lasts, yes. Ah. And work hard. You must work hard because the it's also, word. after 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 acquiring all this, yep. if you don't work hard, you can maintain it. If you come back after a year or so, everything will be in pieces because you can't maintain it. That's also something, if you are given something, you can't look after it because you have been given. You don't know how to look after it. You don't know how difficult it was for the person that gave you to get the money to buy what they will have given you. That's why you find if, if I give you 10,000 today because you didn't work for it, chances you won't do much with it. Thank you. But if you give 10,000 to someone who is an entrepreneur, if you come back after two months, that 10,000 could be 15,000 or 20,000. But other people, you give them 10,000, especially girls. I always say girls of today. You give her 10,000, the first thing she thinks of, she's going to Louis Vuitton, she's going to Gucci. She's go that's, what, that's all they think of. How um, to buy this, the latest hair. That's what all they think of. They will never say, okay, I've been given 10,000. Let me think, what can I invest in to make sure this 10,000 remains there? Others will go to China, buy clothes, resell, make that money multiply. Because that person that is giving you the 10,000 might not give you that 10,000 again anytime soon. And many men, they will give you the money because they want to see whether you think or oh, you're just someone who just... If, if you don't think and don't use your brains, they'll never give you the money again. But if you take that 10,000, you tell him, sweetheart, you gave me 10,000 a month ago, it's now 15,000. Or even if it's, you've only made 10% of it, you still have the money you can, that someone can build on you. What, what is the secret to your success? It's hard work. Hard work and not giving up. And, 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 and I've always have a pillar of support from various people, from my own, uh, the government itself working with the government, working with the ministers, working with NGOs, everyone that I work with, they, they believe in my vision and they always, always support me. And I will not do anything to let them down because if someone believes in you and they trust in you, they trust you with their money, they trust you with their families to look after because when people are traveling from point A to point B, you have, it's a responsibility that you've been given to look after somebody else's child 
or somebody else families so as long as you don't let them down they said they want to go to to america you book them to to a deaf, wrong wrong place exactly. south america they want to go to north america they end up in central america yeah, they're getting lost and the families will not be resting because people are lost all over the world you just have to do something that you're passionate about something that you understand something that you love then you'll succeed in that office yes this is our office okay. this is uh, this is where the money is made mm. hi that's how are Jemima you? she's our boss in the tickets oh. if you want to travel to do your tickets I, I, I'm going to Ghana I need a free ticket that's Taurai if you want to tours right yeah, tours. holiday packages so I wrote do okay nice to meet you sir oh you follow me you know, I never knew that you can actually become a millionaire out of uh, the travel and tour company. So I think when I go back home, I'm probably going to start one as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, you have to work. It's a volumes. Uh, it's about the fake numbers. It's a volumes business. Is it a profitable you, business? It is a profitable business, but it's a volumes business. You have to have lots of clients and clients are not easy to please. But mm. you have to make sure that you please your clients, make them happy. They'll stay with you if, you're, if they are happy. Wow. But if they are not happy, there's so many. In Zimbabwe alone, registered travel agents, we've got more than 250. Wow. So imagine them, for them to pick you out of the 250, it's not an easy thing to do. So you have to have something that they're doing different from others. Wow. Yeah, so that they stay with you. Otherwise, it's not an easy uh, service industry. is difficult who to are be your, in. Who yeah. are your target client? I deal with the corporates mainly, government, parastatals, NGOs, and individuals. We have a few individuals that come, but mainly our travel agents we do with corporates. Wow. Yeah. You know, before I, I go, um, just want to ask you, do you think it's possible to make it in Africa? Nothing is impossible. It is possible to make it in Africa. It's, it's only that it's, it's a mindset that we have. We only think the white people only are the ones that can make it. But we can make it as Africa, as one. If we are united, we work together, it's very possible. It's about working together and supporting each other and having each other's back. And um, the problem that we have, we've got what they call PhD, pull, pull head down syndrome hmm. or pull you down syndrome. Hmm. People don't want to support each other because they think if I take my travel business to Zodwa, she's going to be driving a different car, she's going to be doing this or she's going to be doing that. But what they don't realize is if we support each other, you support my business, I support your business, we keep the money amongst ourselves as Africa, we become a better place. So it's, um, with me, I believe in my Africa. I believe in my Africa. I could never go and stay in England. I don't think I'll ever be able to make it there. I could never go and stay in America. I don't think I can ever make it there. But I think as Africans, we've got one language that we understand each other, that look, this is my brother, even if I don't know you. But as long as I meet a, a, a black person, wherever, we are all one. We stick together as one. It doesn't matter where you come from, but as long as we are black, we are one. So and I wish everybody could like treat us as one, because Africa is one, just one country. It's not wow. that it's got subunits, yeah. but we are all Africans. If you have a message for Africans, what would that message be? Let's stick together, let's work hard, let's support our children that are upcoming so that they do better in life. Let's encourage our children to be entrepreneurs, mm. to work for themselves, to try and get... Look, every child, every individual, yes I know it's not everyone that has to have their own business. Someone has to work for someone, but those that can or that have got the, um, the ability to be entrepreneurs mm. it's best for them to do that because that is where the money is we employ other people fine that assist us but also what you realize is when i started my company in 2003 the people that i started with that i was working with most of them they've all branched out to open their own travel agents wow. so out of my business i think i've birthed about five other travel agents out of this same business i'm not bitter that they left and started their own the, the cake is big for everybody mm. so we must encourage each other as africans to grow to go out there, try and make money, 
try and find what is it that I can do to make my country a better country? Mm -hmm. What is it that I can do to make a change? We are quick to judge our leaders. That is what we do. That is what we are good at. This president is not good, this president is not good. He is also just human. He's a human being. He cannot do it by himself. We need to support each other, we support the system so that our leaders can also have their job, their job can be easy on them. Yes, they are, they are our leaders, but they can't do it alone. So mm. they need a support system. So we are the support system. We are responsible for our own economy. We are responsible for our own development. So we have to take it as a, upon yourselves as an individual. What is it that I'm contributing to the economy to make my country a better country? Mm. What is it am I doing as an individual? Am I working hard? Am I those that are always on social media, always uh, talking negative things about my, my, my government or negative things about my country? What is it that you're contributing? Because if we are doing that, then we're not going anywhere. You always be going to stay outside your own country because you think it's better. Oh, there. It's like even getting a job. Those that work at Travage, they think if they go to Travel Agent B, it's better there than where they are. But it's never greener on the other side of the fence. That's my belief. It's just never greener. You just have to ask yourself, what is it, what can I do to make this place a better place? If you had a chance to change one thing in Zimbabwe, what will it be? I don't think there's anything I would want to change. I love Zimbabwe's ease. I just think we just have to work all together, especially in, the, in our travel industry. What uh, I would encourage us as Zimbabwean in the hospitality industry to work together to make sure we support, especially our national airline, so that we see it going out there. We've got other airlines from other countries that are coming and they want to take over our space. I would really want as Zimbabwe to take over the space, to take over Zimbabwe, to take over Africa as a national airline and as an African airline. That's thing, I think that's the only thing I would want to see change in the travel, travel industry. Brown Saza or White Saza? Brown Saza. All day. Yes, that's what Brown Saza, <laughs> that's what I want here. Yeah. It's very healthy, by the way. They yep. don't tell you the yep. benefits no, of Brown Saza. I, I don't, like, this is the question that I want to ask every Zimbabwe because when I came here, I always preferred the brown over the white one. Yes, it's because in, in Ghana, you guys, you eat... Um, the banku. Yeah, that. Yep. But most Zimbabweans, especially the younger ones, they don't like the brown one, they like the white one. Brown Saza or white Saza? White Saza for me. Bro, you're not an African <laughs> man. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate your time. And um, I'll see you when I get back next time. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe loves you anytime. Thank you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.